Hi everyone, my name is Carlos Moreira and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create a map that reads uh, data from a Google spreadsheet uh, for WordPress. Like in this example we have a US map where maybe these numbers are coming from a Google spreadsheet that you can update whenever you want and uh, the data will also update here on the map without ever coming to the WordPress administration. So to do this we use the interactive Geomaps WordPress plugin, the Pro version. So first thing to do will be to have this plugin installed. I will leave a, a link to the official website on the, on the, on the description of this video. So, and um, one thing I wanna show you real, really quick, I'm not gonna use um, the US map for the purpose of this video because it has a lot of states and it's gonna take longer. So I'm gonna, go with the France map because it has like 12 or 13 regions so we see the regions listed here and these codes we're gonna need them either the code or the name of the region but it's better the code because in our spreadsheet we're gonna need to identify somehow um, which uh, to which region the data belongs to so we're gonna use this these codes so I have a um, Let's start with the spreadsheet. I have a spreadsheet here already, you know, with the region codes that I mentioned. I also have the names, it's not mandatory, but you can have them. And the uh, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add like a header row. I'm gonna call this ID name. Maybe for your spreadsheet, you're gonna have a count, um, code, you know, you can do whatever. You can have whatever data you need to have here. And let's see for the count, I'm gonna add, add some random numbers. And okay, okay. Maybe the code we have maybe positive, it can be some control code you have and then negative some others it can be whatever you have in the in your spreadsheet it doesn't have to be this basically we will need to have a, a region code is the only mandatory field you need but usually if you're using a spreadsheet you will have several columns with numbers etc so that's why I'm adding a couple of extra extra columns okay say so, so another thing we need to do is set up this as, as the others so I'm gonna come to it here okay here I'm gonna freeze the first row okay and what we need to do for this to work is to make the um, two things we need to publish to the web okay yes okay we're gonna I'm just gonna open this link here so we see Okay, here's our spreadsheet. And another thing we need to do is to actually make this uh, public. Um, I know it's not the best, but it's the only way we can get this to work. It only needs to be on this option um, that it has anyone with the link uh, can access it. It doesn't need to be the public on the web, but it can't be the 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 private ver the private option. You have to open it to the public. Okay done okay so now we have our spreadsheet published and open and the the plugin actually can't read from the google spreadsheet what it can do is to read from the json file that it can produce so getting the json file from the spreadsheet is not straightforward um, i advise you to google uh, convert google sp uh, spreadsheet to json or get json from google spreadsheet at the time i'm recording this video i found a couple of tutorials they work maybe in a couple of years they will that will be different but basically for now um, what i needed to do was to copy this long string of numbers and letters etc this uh, random thing here and then i'm going to on the tutorials you will find something like this I basically use this uh, long URL and replace it some part of the URL with that code that I copied there so and 
I end up with this long URL. And this is the URL for the JSON file for the spreadsheet. I'm going to open it. And here's our JSON code. So I have a, uh, an extension on my Google Chrome to see the, the JSON like this. Usually it will, you, may, you might be seeing something like this. I advise you to use, I use uh, JSON tree if I'm not mistaken, which is really cool because it allows me to view the JSON code like this. And I'm gonna take advantage of the uh, this extension. I'm gonna close all the JSON objects. And this is a very complex JSON file. Um, the data is hidden, you know, inside the feed. Now inside the entry, I'm gonna open up entry, and our entries are actually here. And it's not so so straightforward the way they're um, saved here, but we can see here ID, name, count, code, which is the columns that we used. So, okay, now that we have our JSON file and we know more or less the hierarchy, we, we, I'm gonna talk this um, again about this soon, but it's important to know that the data that we need to access is inside the feed and then inside the entry. Okay, so I'm gonna copy my JSON URL gonna come here to the um, to the map again I'm gonna okay I'm gonna call it um, France spreadsheet just for this example regions I'm gonna in regions I'm gonna come here to the option to enable other data sources I'm gonna enable this and the type of source uh, of data that I want is the JSON data and I'm gonna place <coughs> sorry my URL here okay but this is not enough we need to tell the plugin where to get the data from because Google the JSON has its own uh, hierarchy and own structure and the first thing we're gonna do is actually set up the data source property which is the one I told you about. Oh, here it is. Okay, so feed and then entry. And the way we tell the plugin, this is, this is it. We write feed dot entry. Okay, now the plugin knows that we're gonna get the data from inside this object. And then the JSON ID property is the, should be the column the property that has the ID stored. So we're already inside the entry. So let's go back to the, to the JSON file. Okay, so inside the entry, we're gonna be, it's, it's not this ID, we might think it is, it's not, this is just a, a link. It's gonna be this, the ID, but it, the data is not directly accessible inside this. We have another, we have an object inside, and then we have this, uh, dollar sign t so we actually need to you know write well, let's copy this this and then dot dollar t because it's this and then inside that we get this property if you're you if you know a bit of programming you will be familiar with this with the dot notation so we need this property dot dollar sign t so basically what i'm telling i'm going inside the feed inside the entry then for each entry search for this property and end up in this dollar sign t which is where we store the codes okay this might be a bit uh, difficult to follow but now that we have this in maybe we can see something happening okay okay something is happening the map turned green it's recognizing something so now what I want to do, I want to, instead of showing the code on the tooltip, let's try to show the, the name and maybe some of the, the data that was there. And this can be done either down here in the tooltip template or in the tooltip options. Um, this is the default tooltip uh, content template. And um, so we want to show the name and it's the same 
logic as before sorry it's the JSON file I'm looking for okay so the name is actually here and inside the T so we're gonna need this and here uh, these are placeholders we can write like something like this name and then inside this uh, curly braces we can have the the reference so I'm gonna just name and then uh, maybe count and this is gonna be very similar to this oh it's not ID it's uh, T yes count and it's gonna be let's go back count all of them have the dollar sign T count uh, dollar sign Okay, so this is just the HTML code for line break. Um, here, it's you cannot use HTML and basically just consider that whatever is inside the curly braces, it will pick up the data from the region we're interacting with. Okay, so now we see name and the count is the number that we have in the spreadsheet. Okay, it's just gonna save here the map so we don't I don't lose anything that I've done so far. But usually, if you're using a Google spreadsheet, maybe you want to create a heat map or a choropleth map. So I'm going to show you how you can do that. So back to the regions. Scroll down here to the choropleth option. I'm going to enable it. And source field ID again here we can use it's a reference to the field where the value that we want to consider to create the heat map what, what we're gonna uh, read from and again it's gonna be uh, maybe this count dot the dollar sign T okay maybe I'm gonna use some uh, red color and then maybe the minimum color I'm not, I'm not going into much detail, but just uh, so you have an idea of what's possible to do. So let's see what we have now here in the preview. Okay, so we're seeing the darker red. It's the ones with the higher number, 67. This is 12, 8. So you get the idea. So the, the this over color, we're actually it's reading from here. Let me let's put this like this. Okay, and then you have a nice uh, choropleth map uh, reading data from a Google spreadsheet. And um, consider that the plugin will cache, will save a copy of the, the data locally for half an hour. So the, the plugin is not always fetching the, the Google spreadsheet to improve performance. So I'm gonna change one of the lowest. Let me see the era. This is Eau de France uh, 21. Let's make it. Let's make it the biggest one, so like 90. Okay. Usually it's saving. It should be saved. If we come here to the online version, okay, we have 90. But the map here, even if we refresh the page still in the 21 because it's showing a cached version it takes half an hour for it to refresh automatically uh, this might be different in future versions of the plugin maybe you can control this time in the settings but just consider that it's going to be cached one way to uh, like force it to refresh is a little trick that might be useful when you're building the map you know just come here and change the url a little bit it will it will think that it's a different URL, so it's gonna fetch it fetch it again. Okay, now we see here it's the 90 that we placed it on the on the Google spreadsheet, and um, I can change this again. Um, that's mostly it. I'm gonna show you one more trick that might be useful for some of you. The the heat map the options also have a, an option to create uh, custom ranges. So this you can maybe create a rule like everything that it's uh, up to 10, it's one color, up to 20, it's a different color. So you have like solid colors, uh, groups of colors. 
but one thing it can also do instead of numbers it can actually read text so it is this is kind of a trick a hack so I'm gonna create a new rule and and this time we're gonna use instead of the count here I'm gonna use the other the code the code column like positive and negative so I'm gonna change the source here to code which is no longer a number and although this asks for numbers this is a little hack we can write if it's positive green another rule if it's negative maybe red and this might be useful you know for uh, political maps uh, election maps that you want to show the one and you have a field on their sp spreadsheet that tells that and then there's different colors for for them and if we come here, up here to the to the preview now we see that half of them is uh, red or uh, not half but the ones that we chose to be positive uh, or green and the others one are, the others are red so this is just another trick that you can use when when building maps and um, i hope this video was helpful uh, i know the first part of getting the json url might not be so straightforward but once you get it uh, if you follow these instructions of how to get define this id properties everything uh, will start to make sense and uh, hopefully you manage to replicate the map like um, like i did here hope this video helps if you have any question uh, leave a comment or contact me in the links that i will leave in the des description thank you so much